Lights. Thanks for joining us. And today we've got a little deviation from our normal process where we speak with authors. Today we're speaking with Todd Manessis, a narrator or voiceover as the term is in the industry. Um, so good morning, Todd. Uh, good morning, Strider. Nice to talk to you. Or afternoon in this case, because you don't live where I live. So <laughs> that's Afternoon another thing. Good morning for you, but <laughs> it is. Zoom has oh, made it a small world. <laughs> and it's an interesting way to do that in from my era. That is, you know, I'm still dial telephone version of life. So this is all, this is good stuff. <laughs> and it's also good for us authors. We authors, good for us. How's that? That's um, good. In that we have other options for doing things. It's not just the big publishers anymore, although that too is definitely vital. But it's the indie authors and every other way you can do it. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, audiobooks has become the biggest segment of publishing for the last 10 years. It just continues to grow. And a lot of indie authors are always trying to get into audiobooks and you know, think that they have to go through the publisher, the publisher has to discover them, but that's really not the case. Um, you know, there are a lot of books on Audible that are indie published uh with indie authors and no, you know, national publisher to make an audiobook. That's true. In fact, Todd and I met because he did the narration for our Stone, um, The Adventures of Ronan Stone, and I searched, didn't you know, find a, a good narrator, and I did. And then we worked on the process, too, for quite a while. But now that's just my book. We'll get back into that, maybe. Um, but what can you are a narrator and your name is out there i mean you go on to go to amazon and just type in todd manessis and it'll pull up books that you've narrated mm -hmm. yeah dozens uh, do i mean there's over uh, 100 <laughs> 117 i think that are out there that you can purchase but it's i've obviously done more they're still in the process of making their way to audible or amazon <laughs> Now, I know that they're fiction. You've done um, a science fiction, a speculative fiction, probably, um, fantasy fiction. Uh, have you done any nonfiction? Uh, I haven't done a lot of nonfiction, strangely enough. Uh, I think I've done two nonfiction books, maybe, maybe three. Um, one is Myth America, which is selling really well. And it was actually myself and three other narrators. We each had a section of the book. And it's a history book, and it just goes through some of the misconceptions people have about history and what actually happened and people's misconceptions about it. And the other one was about the New England Patriots, the <laughs> dynasty of uh, Tom Brady and uh, Bill Belichick, right right after Brady left, someone wrote this. Now, as far as a narrator or voiceover person, how does that difference affect you? I mean, obviously, you can't. Do you really get into the character the same way, or is it just you you don't really get into the character where you create a character and you know that's their their set voice you you tend to be you want it to be and you don't want it to be dry you don't want it to be you know you're in college and the professor's just droning on about a, a book and we if you've uh, had no. in college yeah that's that's <laughs> what happens sometimes and you don't want that because that's not so you want to make it exciting you want to make it interesting so you are performing the book you're uh, you're not just reading it. And I think that's what a lot of people miss misconceptions with audiobooks and a lot of people who jump into trying to be narrators. Um, you don't you're not reading, you're acting. It's called voice acting. So you're still acting even on a nonfiction book because you have to make it enjoyable and presentable. So you might change tone a little bit, but not as much as you would with, you know, an obvious fantasy book where I'm, you know, talking like a dragon or something like that. Whereas, you know, I'm my own voice, if I'm talking that Bill Belichick's doing something, you know, it's like, well, now we're moving on to Cincinnati, you know, and just change the the tone a little bit. You've been at this for a long time now. Did you have uh, a previous background that led you to this? I always wanted to be an actor and I did, I was in radio for 30 years and back in the stone age of the 80s and did the morning zoo and I was the guy with all the crazy voices in the morning zoo and so I did that for a while, and it just so happened when the internet and everything started that you could be remote uh, that I got into this about 
in 2014, maybe 2010, uh, somewhere up in there, where I started doing this part time. And uh, that's why my, it seems like I've been doing it a while, but my catalog isn't incredibly long because I was still working full time at my other job and doing this as well. So I was putting out maybe three books a year just on the side for the for the fun of it. And then uh, it turned into a full time career. And so now, you know, I put I'm, I'm working on currently I'm working on uh, four books and I hate to do them all at the same time, but circumstances have led it to where they're one after the other. Uh, so I'm trying to get uh, together with those. But but yeah, it's it's fun and it's interesting. I've always been a voracious reader. And this is just something that uh, I combine the two together. Um, my love for, I guess, uh, broadcasting and, you know, being able to talk and entertain people and my love for literature. So I put the two together and here's where I am. Well, you did good for us. As I said, uh, for those out there, Todd was the narrator for Stone, The Adventures of Ron and Stone, the first book. And he'll definitely be there for Luna when that comes about. And now we worked actually quite a while on the process of the different characters right. there, making mm -hmm. differentiation between types. We even actually redesigned one of the characters to better fit the, the process right. and, and the feel of the thing. So is that a commonality or do most authors simply say, hey, it's your job, you take care of it? It, there, it depends. If you're working with a publisher, the publisher basically says, it's your job, you make all the decisions, you're the actor. When you're working with an independent author, and I know that you guys put a lot of time and effort, this is your baby into these books, you know, and it is, it you, is. Don't wanna, you don't want to hand it off. So I like input from the author. You created these characters, you know more about them than I will ever know in just researching them and reading them. So I want to know what you thought behind it. Uh, a lot of times we'll ask, okay, which actor did you have in mind when you created this character? So that kind of gives us a little bit of a launching pad as to, and it's not that we're doing a caricature of that actor or we're imitating that actor's voice. You just want to know your jumping off point, how that actor, his motivation, how he talks, his speech, um, even his physicality. I mean, all that comes into play in an audiobook. You may not think it, but if I've got a if I've got a character who's very small, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of slouch slouch like this when I do it. And if I have a character who's very big and very important, I usually you sit build up, build yourself up, build that's yourself right. up because that's that you know, and that all goes into the the yeah. whole acting and projecting the voice. So, so yeah, if you just you just read it, you're not going to get that. Now, we took a little extra time on ours. Well, you got COVID in the middle of it, and that definitely yeah. slowed down the process. It's one of those things that you dread being a voice actor is. Now, when when you and I worked, I actually produced a, a sheet ahead of time that explained each character that I saw there, what I thought of their background. Even sometimes, as you said, I mentioned who I saw as an actor that this would person this think of this person. This is what I've thought when I when I wrote the book. Right. Um, I said we changed those a little bit, but does that that really help you on getting a oh, feel? Yeah. Yes, definitely. It uh, it helps a lot. First off, as as we always say, and everyone asks and a narrator, yes, we read the book completely through the first time and take notes while we're reading because you give us cues as an author as to how this person reacts, how they sound, uh, you know, the way they react to a situation, if they're gruff, if they're rough, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then that sheet, uh, I think, did I send that sheet to you? I don't know if I sent that to you, but I do have a sheet that I do send the narrator uh, to authors say asking those kinds of questions yeah. about the character. Well, I think I did that to you right off because I wanted I, I knew pretty much what I needed to have happen and I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Right. And you did want the book up front, you know, so you could, because and that that by the way triggered me. I like this. I like this narrator because he needs to know ahead of time rather than just reading it. Because I don't know. Yes, I should probably have gone in, though I did and I was gonna say I would probably should have gone in and listened to some of your books from other your books not just your right. your little blurbs that you put in there uh which i did not but i would recommend that to somebody if you know if you're choosing a narrator see what else they've done and how they work not just that two minute little clip and right. we went through many of those so 
So it is quite a process. Now, for a non-narrator person like me, and I'm an author looking forward to to getting an, a narrator, what process occurs that we, the authors, need to think about or, or be recognized? Well, um, there are several ways to do it. Use some of the places that are out there, like an ACX. ACX has kind of become a meat market, though, uh, because they're they're really pushing um, newer narrators or people that don't have a lot of experience to join and try to get on there. And that's a good place to start. I mean, you're going to listen to a lot of narrators there. Uh, if you're wanting an audiobook, listen to audiobooks. Find an author you like in the style that you like. Everyone will work with someone. I mean... It's it's work. No one's going to turn it down. So it's not because, okay, you have to be, and I think a lot of authors think I have to be a published author through a big publisher before I can get an audiobook. And that's not the case anymore. Okay, now everybody can see the egg crating behind you. That is your, your production room, is that? This is my vocal booth, yes. And uh, I call it my uh, hashtag superhero VO booth. Uh, so you're the- not just under a blanket in a closet. And I've no, heard I'm people not, I'm that do that, too. <laughs> Some people do that, but I have Absolutely. actually, it's a, it's a professional vocal booth. It's called a whisper mm-hmm. room. And, uh, you know, I have a door here to open out into my studio outside. And then when I close it and shut, it closes airtight, and it's pretty darn quiet in All here. All right. And do a good job. Now, do you actually produce it in your office and then it goes to wherever you you do you don't work it through say acx or find away voices or it's not actually through their process it's through you as the narrator is that how it goes yes i also uh i do everything in this in this booth and i also do the mastering and the editing and so forth and so on sometimes uh you will farm that out to someone who does that uh, cause there are, there are people that just engineer and that's mm-hmm. all they do. And they're perfect at it. If I'm in a pinch, I will let someone else do it. When I work for a publisher, I don't handle that. I just send them the raw files and they have people that do all that. All right. If I'm working like for your book or an independent author, I've usually handled most of that. And for indie authors, it's not that difficult. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. <laughs> Right, right. It's not that hard. And they do make it fairly simple. And there are banks of narrators out there that you can go and test and listen to. So it's not just, you know, pull one out of a hat. Yes. Um, and, and and most publishers also have a roster, as they call it, of narrators. Now, talking about about uh, different kinds of books and things and but your your world building or the author's world building, does that effect or acting of a because it is a voice acting Mm -hmm. um yes it does reading the book and doing the audiobook sometimes is a little different because when i'm creating the world in the audiobook i usually have the freedom to create it so that okay these guys from this region sound like this they sound a little german these guys from this region sound like this Whereas the book may not say that, but it helps for the listener to experience the book and to uh, keep things a little bit different. How do you ever keep track of them? Oh my gosh. I was. (laughs) There's a secret we have. I have a a list and most people make uh, a list, either if a a spreadsheet or I use, uh, I use my notion um, app where I will put down the character's name, First time I come up with their voice, and usually I come up with a voice when I'm reading the book. And sometimes I've changed them from that voice to what I actually go to record it after several, you know, times of using it. I'm like, okay, this voice really doesn't work. This this is not this character. Um, And I'll go back and change it. But I will put a line uh, that's that character that helps me remember who he is, record it, and save it right there. Yeah, it would drive me crazy. I believe that now now you've done as as um stones adventures of ronan stone you did just a single narrator doing the book the entire thing including right. female voices and, and it turned out great especially still i tell you what i've had so many comments on stone like gosh oh, just the sure. filth and really i was amazed because that's not quite the sound i had thought of when i wrote it but i love it 
do you work with other narrators at times and do say two narrators passing off different characters or 15 or whatever how does that work yeah um it depends how it's done um if you're doing a, a duet which is a lot of the uh romance novels are duets mm -hmm. where basically you have two narrators one is the male one is the female narrator and each chapter is narrated by one of the characters now when they do that in that whole chapter the female may be narrating it but she will do the male parts in that chapter and the man uh -huh. will do the female parts in his chapter that's completely different from what would be a uh, uh what is it called a uh, a full cast production where everyone is different and you only handle those lines and there's a there's a school of thought where a lot of uh you know the dual narration got very popular for a while and uh a lot of listeners said that they don't like it some like it some don't i myself have done that listening i do listen to a lot of books every time i drive i'm listening right. um to the the thing where different chapters are by different people he she in particular versus mm -hmm. all together in one story so it's got its ups it's got its downs right. and at the moment also we are in the downside because we're running out of time yeah. And we say this all the time. We just run out of time. Todd, I thank you for doing Stone so well. I will pass on your name forever. I mean, <laughs> you do Appreciate great. It. And you and I will talk further down the road because Luna will be coming out soon in audio. And uh, we'll just get to that. Also, for those of you, those authors out there, um, Todd is in our author resources section of Durham and Publishing. And for now, we're just going to have to say goodbye. We may have you back one of these days because it's always fun to talk. Okay. And especially when you've got the voice, you know, we can listen to your <laughs> voice instead of mine. Um, they'll love that too. Well, and just one quick thing. If anyone has uh -huh. questions, any thought, you know, shoot me an email at the website. I'll gladly answer any questions they have for how to get the process rolling and with me or with someone else. It doesn't matter. And they can link directly to you at uh, DermanPublishing.com mm -hmm. uh, author's resource page. You're on there and list it. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate your time with us today so much. And it's been fun. I've learned. Um, everybody else out there has got to learn because nobody knows it all. And so thanks again for being with us. Thank you. And I'm Strider signing off today for Author in the Headlights, sponsored by Durham Publishing. And thank you all for being with us once again. Until next time.